Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 91 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, hopefully most of you guys already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I I'm going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I've got a glitch in the matrix here. Let's see if that stabilizes. Ah, let's move to a different camera. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 90. But I must first ask, were you successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend, double chest bump. And if you are not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Now also just let me know how many of you guys struggled with this homework assignment. Seemed like it should have been pretty easy because I showed you exactly what you needed to do, the exact code to create a step down binary counter that counts from 15 down to zero. I showed you how to do that. And all, all I asked you to do was to make a count up counter, you know, binary counter. How hard could that be, right? Should take you five minutes. First, I should ask you how many of you guys spent a week trying to find the X underscore inc increment command. There is no X underscore increment. There is only an X underscore decrement. And so you sort of get the countdown timer for free. But if you want to do the count up timer, you have to think a little bit. Now, this is the thing with modern programming languages like like Python, we love them, but really they make our brain mushy. They make our brain mushy because we've got a million commands that we can draw on. And if there's not a command, then we can search on a library. And in effect, we go through our lives just finding other people's solutions to the problems that we have. And there's so many different commands, no matter what we want to do, there's almost always an easy way to do it. Not so in the state machine, not so in assembly language. How many commands do we have in the assembly language? There's eight for the state machine, eight for the state machine. And we've gotten, I've already taught you most of them, over half of them I've already taught to you. And so we're kind of running out of bullets in our, you know, in our box here to fire at this, uh, fire at this program. And you see what the problem is, you're not thinking, if you struggle with this, you're not thinking outside the box and you're thinking, okay, let me go find a simple solution. But you got to remember, we're getting down there at the bare silicon. We're getting down there with the zero and ones in the transistors, we're operating down there at the silicon level. And so therefore you have to think a little differently. Now, let me show you, don't yell at me, don't yell at me, but there was a very simple solution. We had, we had a count up timer for how we had configured our circuit, which was something like this. Okay. And this goes to ground and then this goes to the GPIO pin, okay? This goes to the GPIO pin. And what would happen? Well, if I write the GPIO pin high, the LED comes on. If I write the, write the GPIO pin low, the LED goes off. But then the challenge is, <clears throat> is that the highs and lows 
are working in a way, since I only have X underscore decrement, they're working in a way that they start out at 15 and they count down. Okay, but now this is what I want you to see. And what you can see is, I think hopefully you guys saw that this would be a count up timer like this. Okay, this would be a count up timer like this. I'll just do a few more bits here. And you guys know this, right? We've done this throughout this class. I'll do one more here. Okay, that is a count up timer from zero to four. Now, what I want you to see is if you just opposite those signals, what are you going to get? Well, this is going to be 15. And then this, i make that solid. This is going to be 14. And this is going to be, uh, this is 14. And then uh, this is 13. Okay, so if you just opposite, if you opposite a count up timer, if you opposite a count up timer, you get a count down timer. Well, what happens if you opposite a count down timer? If you opposite the count down timer, you get the count up timer. So what would be the easiest way to do this? Well, take your LED, okay, like this, and then what you do is you connect this to the five volt rail, you connect this to the five volt rail, and then you connect this where you had ground to the GPIO pin. Now, if the GPIO pin is up, the LED is off. If the GPIO pin is down, the LED comes on. And so I can use the exact same code that I had shown you in the last lesson if I just connect the LEDs up differently. Okay, you're yelling and screaming and crying foul, but what I'm telling you is, that when you don't have a million operations or instructions and you only have 32 lines of code and you only have eight instructions, man, sometimes you might have to pour, you might have to push things down to your actual hardware to get the solution that you want. Okay, so let me know in the comments, did anybody think of the most obvious and the most trivial? Did anybody think of the most obvious and the most trivial select, uh, uh, the most obvious and the most trivial uh, solution? Okay, I don't know. Let's see, I need to do some real quick little, little management here if I can. Give me just a second. I should have done this before I got you guys online but I need to make sure that I'm configured here for what I'm going to show you. Give me just a second, be patient here. Okay. Uh, I just gotta get, I didn't have my window configured correctly and I need to do that. Okay, that's good. So now we will get back over here. Okay, so hopefully a few people out there, a few people out there thought of this solution, but it's not going to surprise me if almost no one thought of it. So I don't even have to show you that solution because it's just moving like four wires on your circuit to get that solution. But let's also say that, okay, if you wanted to do it with software, how would you do it with software? So let's look at that, okay? So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, I'm, now I have the original circuit back, right? The circuit is just like it was before. I've got four LEDs. This, uh, this LED goes to pin 16, 17, 18, 19, the long leg, goes to the GPIO pin, the short leg goes through a 220 ohm resistor to the ground rail. So I'm not playing any circuit tricks now. This is hooked up exactly like it was last lesson, but what I'm gonna do is in software, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna say import RP2, I'm gonna say import time, and then I'm gonna say from machine import 
10, and I'm going to give the decorator saying, hey, incoming, incoming assembly language uh, function, and that is with the de decorator at rp2.asm underscore pio, and then out init. We're going to init our output pins, and that is going to be equal to rp2.pio PIO dot out underscore low. So before we turn the state machine on, all of the pins are going to be turned low. All right. We have this awkward dangling comma there. It's very important. And then we are going to say uh, times four like that. And then comma our out, our out underscore shift direction is equal to rp2.pio.shift underscore right like that. And I can tell that you can't see that. So let me move it down like that so you see it. Okay, so now, man, I find it very awkward that here I say set the output pins low, but then it's in the inst instantiation where you say what the output pins are. And so this is just very awkward to me. I'm saying set them low before I've told you what they are. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and that doesn't like that because <clears throat> this nonsense here, this should be, this should be, underscore PIO open and then out underscore init and now all is happy. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to wrap underscore target. So, right, I'm going to be creating my infinite loop and now I'm going to set my X register to 0B111. And uh, one, four ones. Now, what am I doing? I'm kind of getting set up here. It's like I'm getting set up to do a countdown timer. All right, I'm getting set up to do a countdown timer. And so now I'm going to say, I'm going to label, I'm going to label bit loop like that to make a countdown timer. And now what I am going to do is I am going to Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to jump. I'm going to decrement x, x decrement. Where am I going to jump to? Bit loop like that. So now that is that has got my loop going there. And now what do I want to do inside of this loop? I'm going to move to the... Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I've got to move those, I've got to move that X to the pin. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, right in bit loop, I am simply going to move, I want to say it very carefully, I'm going to move uh, to the pins X, okay? like this. This is kind of like what we did before, right? This is kind of like what we did before. I'm going to take all those spaces out to get that higher up. Okay. So this is kind of like what we did before. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start seeing if I can slow it down. So I'm going to say no op like that. And then 31. I want to do all the no ops I can inside of this. So I'll go as slow as I can because that was the assignment. And then even on this jump, I'll do one. I'll do 31 like that. Okay. Now, if you look at this, I think this is what we did last week. And so uh, let's go ahead and finish up the program. And then I'll show you what you got to do to make it do what we want. So I'll say SM0 is equal to RP2 dot state machine. And then what state machine? State machine zero. I'm going to run PIO, uh, PIO, PROG, which I just put together. As slow as I can go about is about 2,000 hertz. And then the out underscore base 
is equal to pin 16, like that, close that, and then sm0.active, like that, that looks good, and I'll make it a one this time. Turn it on. All right, so now I think that one problem that I see here is I didn't put in my program, my uh, definition, so I'm going to say define. P-I-O-P-R-O-G, like that. And you guys were probably yelling at me, but let me tab these things over. Tab. Okay, and now we're gonna do our wrap. All right, so let's see, I'm setting X, and then I start my bit loop, and I move X to the pins, then I wait, and then I decrement X, jump to bit loop, and I wrap. So let's run this thing and see what happens. Doesn't like line five, and denied, open, close, parentheses. Now let's do this, and doesn't like RPW. Man, I am just, uh, I'm not on the top of my game today, am I? RP2, right there. Okay, so let's run this thing and state machine rp2 and you guys probably caught this uppercase s okay so what am i doing here i have the countdown timer and it is running really 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 fast so let's see if we can slow it down so i'm going to take this and i'm going to come here so let's see if i can slow it down now let's take these two. And what do I have to remember? I only have like 32 lines of code. So this is four. And then we're going to make that about eight. And then I'm going to paste again. And now I've got 12. And now I've got 16. Now I've got 20. Let's see if this thing will still run. Yeah, okay, I got 20, and now let's go. This is gonna be 24. Let's see if it'll still run. Okay, it's still running. And now I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna get, this is gonna be like 28. Okay, and I know I can't add, but this is 28, then this is 29, and this is 30, 31, and 32, and the wrap target doesn't count. So you see, this is kind of like a brute force way to make it run slow. But now, what are you saying? You are saying, but wait, you said make a count up timer. But I want you to come back over here. I want you to come back over here. All right, come back over here. And what did we learn? A count down timer, a count down timer is the opposite of a count up timer. So if I have a count up timer, what do I want to do? I want to invert my four bits. I want to invert my four bits, okay? And so what I am going to do is I am going to come back over here. Huh. How could we invert our bits? Do you remember our friend here? When we move, we can move the invert of it. And the great thing is it takes X, it inverts what it took and then put it in pins, but the original X stays where it is so it doesn't mess up our counter. Okay, so this is like the, so the very simple software version of what I showed you. You could also do very simply in hardware. So I don't know, how much did you guys struggle with this? How much did you struggle with it? Because I've shown you a very trivial way you could do it in hard hardware, and I've showed you a trivial way you can do it in software. Let's make sure the trivial software way works. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, boom, count up timer, 
running kind of slow, huh? But really, do you think that's running slow or do you think that's running fast? Setting this to 31 no ops is not going to help me because it's outside of the bit loop. And uh, okay, so this is kind of slow, but really it's too fast. Okay, really it's too fast. So what do I want? I want a whole lot more no ops. But what is my problem? I'm out of lines of instructions. So I got to take these silly things out and I've got to be smarter. What is a way that I could do a bunch of steps? What's a way that I could do a bunch of steps without costing anything? Well, how about if we did a little looping? <clears throat> so inside of this bit loop, I'm going to put another loop that just does no ops. I can't mess with my X register because it's counting the outside loop. But who's your friend? The Y register. So I am going to set, I am going to set my Y what is that nonsense? I'm going to set my Y register to 0B1111. One, 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 one. Okay. And I'm going to take advantage of getting another 31 no ops just by putting that there. So now I have set one <coughs> to the number 15. I have set one, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have set Y to the number 15. Now, after doing that, and what I want to do is I want to leave some space. I'm going to create another loop, and it's going to be, I'm going to label this loop. I'm going to label this loop D loop for a delay loop, okay? Can't put a the no op on something that's not an operation. This is just a label, but I got that. And now I'm going to do a no op. How many times? 31 times. And then I'm going to do a JMP. But this time I'm going to jump on Y deck. Okay. <clears throat> and then where am I going to jump to? The D loop. <clears throat> okay. So you see right here, I got 32 kind of just almost for free. Okay, I got 32 almost for free, and I'm going to do it 32 times. And so now let's watch this and see what happens. Ah, bound method. Where is that for? Where is that line 13? Oh, yeah, I do that all the time like that. Sorry. Open, close space. Now let's do it. Okay. Okay, now... It's running at about the same speed, but I did that with a very small number of steps. Now, what you might think is, okay, let's take this and let's do this like six times because I have a whole lot of lines of code left. Or we could loop more times. Remember in the earlier lesson, I said that Y, the Y register, is 32 bits long. The Y register holds 32 bits, and we've only set four. We can set five. Now, what is the problem that we have? <clears throat> the problem that we have is with the set command, we can only set five. But if I set five, this then is another, you know, this is going to be twice as many, uh, twice as many loops because this is 15 and this number is 31. So I'm going to make it go half as slow just by setting five bits instead of setting four bits. So now watch it. Okay. Counting up much slower. Counting up much slower. Okay. Why? Because I am setting, <coughs> I am setting this to delay for one, two, three, four, five. Now, this is the problem. You say, well, put another one there. But the problem is you can't set it to that number. And while you see what happened is when I tried to put another number in there with a set, the program crashed because you can only set one bit. Okay. But now, who is your friend? 
Your friend is the shift. So what I am going to do is I am going to move. So I've set Y to the biggest number I can, but now I'm going to move it to ISR because ISR is a special register. It is shiftable. So what am I going to put in ISR? I'm going to put Y in ISR. <coughs> now I have a big number in Y. I've got a big, I mean, I've got the biggest number that I can get, 11111, and I moved it into ISR. Now, I'm not even going to start doing the 31 business anymore because I've got so much. I can slow it down now. I don't even have to worry about that. What can I do now to ISR? I can in, and what am I going to bring into ISR? What am I going to shift in? I am going to shift in from Y. I am going to shift in one more bit. And so the ISR register, because in operates on the ISR register, <coughs> the ISR register is going to go from one, 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 five ones. I'm going to shift in from Y into ISR, one more bit, the least significant bit. Now what do I have? I have six. I have six ones. And let's see if, if five ones, if four ones was 15 and five ones is 31, now six ones is 64. So this thing is going to go half as fast again because I'm going to shift this bit using the N. I'm going to shift it in, and then this should have been, I'm going to shift it in from Y. Okay, I'm going to shift in from Y. N always operates to the ISR. I'm going to shift in from Y, one least significant bit. This doesn't mean shift in a one. It means shift in the least significant bit of Y, and that's going to go into ISR, and now it's going to operate half as fast, okay? It's going to operate twice as slow, okay? So look at that. All right, so we've done that. And, uh, yeah, okay. So what could we do even better? Instead of shifting in one bit, if I want to go, if I want to go four times slower, I could shift in two bits. Okay, now let's watch that. Okay, this doesn't seem to be, uh, okay, this doesn't seem to be, I see what I did. You guys, it wasn't slowing down like I thought. What I've done is I've shifted it into ISR, but now I have that bigger number. What do I have to do? I have to move that bigger number back into Y. All right. That was scaring me. Okay. So that was scaring me because what I was doing is I was creating the large number in the ISR by shifting in Y. But now what do I have to do? I have to go back and I have to put ISR into Y because Y is my counter. Now let's watch this thing. Every time I was halving the speed and saying, you see, it's going twice as slow. It's like, it doesn't look like it's going twice as slow, but I kept going. And then I saw my mistake. Okay, so let's look at this. Now look at that one, two, three, four. Okay, and now you can see, well, what if I brought in four of them? Okay. You see, now it's going painfully slow, and I could half it again by bringing in, <clears throat> I could half it again by bringing in uh, five. Okay, so also I think what I can show you is, I could bring in the four, and then you see, well, at five, I can't do anything else because I brought in 
everything that I could bring in, but I could just do it again. Like I could say input Y and I would say Y comma four again. And now let's see if we can even see it. All right, so let's see if we can even see it. So I'm gonna bring in four bits, one, 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 and I'm gonna bring in four bits again, one, 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 one. And now we have ourselves an incredibly slow timer. And uh, let's see, that's too painful. Let's see, let's make sure this concept works. I'm gonna make that a one and a one just to make it run where we can see it. So uh, I, in, I shift a one in, I shift another one in, and then I move ISR to Y. So let's see. Okay, one, two, three, four. And so you see that if I made this five and five, then this thing is gonna become so slow that we're not gonna just sit here and wait on it. It would be so slow. And then what you could see is I've got like more space that I could slow it down even more. And then you could be even more clever. And so you can see that, that by thinking through this, you can, by thinking through this, you can make this arbitrarily slow even though you only have 32 instructions or 32 lines of code. So let's make it go like this. And let's make sure we've met the assignment of a slow counter. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, guys, I hope what you can see here is, is that as we're more limited, we have to start thinking out of the box and we got to start being a whole lot more creative. But this is pretty impressive that with only 32 lines of code and with only eight different instructions of which, let's see, we use the set, we use the label, we use the move, we use the in, <clears throat> and we use the jump. We only use five of the eight commands, and with those five out of the eight commands, and well under, well under 32 lines of code, we have a binary up state counter, a binary up counter on the state machine where everything is done on the state machine. I'm not passing it numbers or anything from Python. It's all done on the state machine. Okay, guys, I hope you're not getting bored with this, but I just find it fascinating that we have to think, take our thinking to the next level when we're going to operate down there on the PIO state machine. I hope you guys are enjoying taking this class as I as much as I am making it. As always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are standing with me on Patreon. Right now, the reason this channel continues and I'm able to continue to make comment is because of you guys who are supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. Also, you can help this channel by giving me a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you do, make sure to ring that bell so you will get notification when future lessons drop. And as always, Share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.